So, the coronavirus lockdown is still in force, and so I thought, why not make another video? And this time, I'm going to do a teardown of my side mount rebreather. I've been diving this rebreather, or a version of it, for about nine years now, so I'm pretty comfortable with it and how it operates in the water. I do think that all side mount rebreathers are a compromise. I think uh, they come with advantages and lots of disadvantages. What's important is to understand those compromises and make some choices and choose the right gear for the job. So one of the things in particular uh, about my side mount setup, my side mount rebreather setup, is that I don't dive with any onboard uh, cylinders uh, to run the rebreather. So there's no onboard oxygen, there's no cylinders on the rebreather, no oxygen and no diluent on the rebreather itself. I'll have a 3 litre of oxygen on my right hand side which will sit just in front of the, the rebreather and that will be plumbed in uh, and then I'll have uh, at least one cylinder, maybe two cylinders on the left hand side uh, as diluent and if it's a single cylinder that cylinder will have a Y valve, one regulator running the rebreather, the other one for, for bailout. Both cylinders, both the diluent cylinder or cylinders plural uh, and the oxygen cylinder uh, plumb into the rebreather using QC6s. So everything's off board, uh, I really like that and what it means is this rebreather is pretty lightweight, it's quite easy to move around uh, and the system's very modular, when I get in the water plug, plug, uh, plumb everything in uh, and I'm good to go. It also means this rebreather works very well as a bailout rebreather when I pair it up with my back mount unit um, and in that case I will use the oxygen from the back mounted rebreather to feed this and the diluent, my offboard dill, which is again the same dill I'm using for the back mount rebreather, that offboard dill will also uh, cross connect into the side mount unit. So I quite like having this completely independent, no cylinders on it, very modular, very flexible system. The other thing, because it's then not very heavy, you know, I've got you know one and a half kilo of lead on it, but it's quite light. The other advantage of that is that when I'm wearing it in the water, it will happily move up and down with my breathing. So um, I find that uh, a really good system uh, for nice work of breathing. I have a light rebreather that actually moves up and down as you breathe in and out. So let's have a look at the unit itself. So let's start up at the uh, top here. Let's start up with the mouthpiece. It's a jokey mouthpiece, the uh, French uh, lateral rebreather. Um, so I've been using this mouthpiece, yeah, since, since I got the rebreather. So I put the rebreather together quite a few years ago. So I really like the, the jokey mouthpiece. Um, I got this well before kind of custom side mount DSVs were available. So a lot of those custom side mount DSVs uh, actually have the hoses coming out at an angle. So the hoses will come down under your arm. But the way in which this is configured means uh, the hose come out the side um, and then sort of do a bit of a kink before they go into uh, into the unit. One of the things is that I have actually put a uh, some lead flashing on the hoses just to uh, give them a bit of weight. And for uh, for quite a few years, um, I was struggling to get the uh, DSV to sit in my mouth comfortably. And despite you know I had lots of different bits of, of lead on here and I was trying all sorts of different things, and finally. Uh, I think I cracked it. I've got a piece of lead flashing just bent along the top of the mouthpiece here. And that little bit of weight on the top of the mouthpiece just stops the top of that uh, mouthpiece there, just stops the, the, the top of the, the bite uh, uh, from kind of cutting into the, the top of my gums, which is a problem I had uh, for, for quite a while. So that's a, a neat little, little trick. Um, otherwise, you know, it's the, yeah, the jokey mouthpiece. A um, couple of Draeger Ray hoses. Uh, going into the rebreather. Also up at this end I've got my uh, cell monitoring, my PPO2 monitoring which is a shear water, shear water on a fissure cable, uh, fairly standard uh, and that's monitoring in this case two cells that are down inside the scrubber and you can also see up the top end here uh, one of the uh, QC6's coming out, uh, QC6 uh, with a flow stop and uh, that QC6 runs up to the ADV, which is just sitting on the top here. It's a dolphin ADV, and what we've actually done is we've cut a hole in uh, the, the casing there. So with that hole cut, you can actually press the diaphragm down with your thumb um, to actually uh, let the ADV act as a, as a manual ad valve. So there's no other manual ad valve, just the ADV, 
um, but with the ability to press it, I, I'm pretty happy that I've always got a way to get gas into the rebreather. When I'm diving, that rebreather is obviously sitting here, and I can reach behind myself and actually get the thumb, give my thumb, sorry, to to that ADV there, and just press the, the diaphragm down. The other thing you'll see just here, if I just hold it up, the dump valve coming through the uh, through the outer outer hole there, uh, and this dump valve is actually uh, one of the dump valves from the Inspiration, uh, so from the AP Inspiration unit. Um, this has been machined onto uh, an MSR bag, You'll look at, I'll look at the cantalong uh, in a second. Uh, and the reason I've gone for that particular dump valve in this case is that uh, it's got a piece of string on it, it's got a, I think it's a pull dump, so when I activate it there, um, and I find that really important when I'm diving this unit as a bailout rebreather. Um, you know, as I've gone down, the ADV's fired, kept this uh, full of gas and as you're coming up obviously uh, this rebreather is now full uh, and wants to vent um, and whilst it wants to vent it's really floaty and it's this really large awkward buoyant thing on your right hand side so actually being able to reach around and dump the gas um, by pulling on the, uh, the string there uh, is pretty helpful. So here we go my side mount rebreather uh, without its case. So I'm going to talk to you now about some of the choices I made in putting this together and also a little bit about the gas flow. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that the unit only has a single counter lung. I've been diving and putting together custom rebreathers for a few years now and all the rebreathers I've put together have all had a single counter lung. So I'm reasonably happy uh, with that choice. Um, and what it's allowed me to do is keep the rebreather quite small and quite compact. With a single counter lung, I needed to decide which side of the loop to put the lung on. The lung on the exhale side can be a good water trap, but a long, thin lung, which is going to lie here and be along your body in a side mount rebreather configuration won't necessarily act as a pretty great water trap so marginal advantage uh, to, to doing that. By not putting the counter lung on the exhale side uh, it did allow me to route the gas directly into the scrubber uh, and part of the idea is that exhaling directly into the scrubber will keep the scrubber a little bit warmer as well. The downside to this is that uh, all that exhaled uh, gas, all the condensation in my breath, all the saliva, all the gunk that you produce when you're diving a rebreather, all of that unfortunately ends up um, going straight down into the scrubber and that softener line does get quite damp after a long dive. Once the gas has gone down in so into the canister, it actually travels all the way through the canister. There's a, a dip tube, a, a pipe that it passes through, reaches the end, the base here, and then passes through the scrubber material, past the face of the two cells that are inside the rebreather, and then into the counter lung. Talked about the uh, ADV here, the Dolphin ADV with its uh, accessible button, and then from there just up into the mouthpiece. The counter lung itself is just uh, an MSR bag, so uh, you know, a bag designed uh, as a water bladder. Um, that MSR bag then has various P ports, Draeger P ports in. Uh, one of my favourite bits of uh, kit. Uh, nice and easy to fit those into kind of any bladder um, and customise it to turn it into a counter lung. And then the uh, what would have been, uh, and then what would have been uh, the, the lid for the uh, water bladder. Uh, that's modified so that it takes the dump valve. Um, the dump valve itself just goes into the cap and then screw the whole lot together. I've got a dump valve and yeah, airtight counter lung, ready made. I think um, one of the things I like about this rebreather is that I've managed to make it very simple, uh, very straightforward. There are only uh, a few connections really um, and that uh, yeah, it's a pretty streamlined uh, simple rebreather. I've used it quite happily for upwards of five hours um, and I've had it down to an excess of 70 meters so I'm pretty comfy that it works 
pretty simple, pretty basic, um, but does the job.